Hey y'all, Kyle, AA0Z. I've got Node-RED running on a Raspberry Pi at my remote station. And if you know anything about Node-RED, it's inherently insecure. It uses port 1880 for both the programming interface and displaying the dashboard. You can configure user base security uh, for Node-RED, but it's a pain in the butt. I don't recommend it. Instead of opening port 1880 on the remote WAN router firewall, I'm going to show you how you can create an SSH tunnel to access any device or any service that is on the inside of your remote network with just a Raspberry Pi inside that remote network. So I would only recommend this type of SSH port forwarding method if you need to perform very light bandwidth intensive tasks uh, as this connection doesn't perform well uh, as well as a high bandwidth scenario or take the place of a IPsec VPN. So in my case, or my use case, is I get into my Node-RED server at my remote station to turn my power supply, my flex, and switch antennas. That's the only thing that I do over this connection. I don't pipe anything else over this connection because it is low bandwidth. So the first part of this configuration only applies if you have Node-RED installed on the same Pi that you're trying to access. So above is a typical setup, so let's go through it. So you've got your computer that is away from your home or your remote station that is connected to a router, which is connected to the internet. And then you've got your home or remote router that has port 1234 open to the internet. And yes, this is security by obscurity, so Put all your hate comments down below, uh, which is forwarded to your Raspberry Pi inside of your remote network. And this is the Pi that is going to be running Node-RED, and it's got an IP address of 192.168.1.10, and the Node-RED install is found on port 1880 UI for the dashboard. And this is pretty much a typical setup that you would find in a remote install. Now, before you start, you're gonna need to make sure that SSH is running on your Node-RED server. So typically, SSH is installed on your Pi when you install an image, but we are going to check. So from a terminal window, I'm gonna do this from PuTTY, but from a terminal window, we are going to uh, type in SSH tick uppercase V, and you should see something that uh, says open SSH or open SSL 1.1.1 and a date. Uh, you can also check this by uh, doing a PS AUX and then piping that to grep and then tick SSH, another tick, and that's going to show you all the SSH services that are running. You can also do a sudo system ctl status uh, ssh.service, and that is going to show you the status of the SSH server. If you don't have SSH installed, you can install it by doing s or uh, typing s sudo app dash get install SSH and hit enter, and then um, accept any dependencies that it uh, needs to install. So once that is complete, or you're just unsure if SSH is running, it might be installed, but it, it might not be running. So you can do a systemctl, sudo system, ctl enable ssh.service, that will enable the service, and then you can do a sudo system ctl start ssh service, and that will start the service. So now that's done. Let's test it within the internal network on the Raspberry Pi. All right, so let's install PuTTY. Uh, it is an SSH client that we're going to install on our Windows machine. A link to PuTTY is going to be found in the website or the description below. Uh, once it's installed, let's connect to your Raspberry Pi on your network. So in the host field, uh, after we run the program, uh, we're going to put 
in the host field the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 192.168.1.10, and we're going to keep the port at 22. That is the default port of the Raspberry Pi. So you can see down here, we are eventually going to, from the internet, come in from port 1234, and that is going to be forwarded to our Raspberry Pi 192.168.1.10 on port 22 inside of our remote network, okay? So after you've put in the host name and the port number, hit the open and it will automatically create an SSH tunnel to your Raspberry Pi. A dialog box is probably going to pop up asking you to accept the SSH key. Go ahead and accept it. So you're now you're going to log in with uh, Pi as your credential or the username that you use to set up your Pi and then the password and it is going to log in to your Pi. Now, to save the settings that you just enabled, you can place a session name in the saved session field and click save, and that is back on the original screen here. So if you have a session 182.168.1.10 on port 22, you can come in here to save sessions and name it uh, Pi on local network, and then hit the save button and it will save that session. Next, we wanna modify the firewall settings on your remote WAN router to accept connections from the outside to a port higher than 1024. And then we're gonna forward those packets to port 22 to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Now for this example that I've got above, we're gonna use the port number 1234 on your remote router here. I would probably set a static IP address on your Pi or set a DHCP reserve on your router so this Pi gets the same IP address over and over at your remote network. You can search YouTube on how to place a static IP on a Raspberry Pi. There's hundreds of videos on how to do that. I'm not gonna get into detail on how to set a static IP or do port forwarding since there's Again, 100 videos on how to do that probably on your router. If you're familiar, unfamiliar with the process, best thing to do is to search YouTube on how to complete that process. Another thing that is out of scope, it, our WAN routers don't change IP addresses very often, but um, if you wanna use a dynamic DNS service, that's the easiest way to ensure that you can always find your Pi and your remote network on the internet. I use Google's dynamic DNS service with a domain name that I purchased along with a, a client called DD Client that runs on the Raspberry Pi, the same Pi that my Node-RED server runs on. Again, if you want to configure and learn how to configure each one of these services, there's YouTube videos on how to do this and uh, how to get you started. So now let's configure PuTTY to get into your Node-RED system from the outside. So this is where the rubber meets the road. All right, so first, what we're gonna do is we are going to put the uh, IP address or the host name into the, uh, the host name box here. So I'm gonna just use a, a dummy host name of uh, example.aa0z.com and we're gonna connect to port 1234 and that is on SSH. So now in your session or your category window over here, you're gonna come down here to connection and then SSH and click the plus symbol here and then go down to tunnels. And that's, this window is going to be displayed. So now what we're going to do is, let me bring this over here. So our source port is going to be uh, 1880, okay? And our destination is going to be the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, 192.168.1.10. And then we're gonna put a colon and we're gonna put the port of the uh, node red 1880 and we are going to click the add button so what that is going to do is that it's going to say 
anything that is directed to port 1880 on my local machine that I have started this putty session on, I am going to forward that traffic over to the device that is has an IP address of 192.168.1.10 on port 1880, okay? So whenever I come up here to the session, I'm going to make sure that it's still in there. I'm going to come up and click on session, and your host name and your port is still saved here. I would come in here and uh, give it a name so that we're going to call this test. We're going to click the Save button. So that's going to bring this saved session down here into the, the list of uh, my saved sessions. So then whenever I click on and create this SH SSH tunnel, anything that is pointed to port 1880 on my local Windows machine is going to go over the Internet, over the tunnel, and it's going to connect to the 192.168.1.10 machine, and it's going to ask what services are running on one, uh, port 1880, which is node red. So let's go ahead and get into this, and I will show you what it's going to do. All right, after I hit the open button, it's going to make a connection over to my SSH high. And if it's probably going to, the first time you connect, it's probably going to ask you to uh, accept their credentials, and you're going to say yes. So now I'm at the login here, and I'm going to log in as Pi. So now I am logged in to my Pi at my remote station, okay? I have built that tunnel that says anything that I get or I access port 1880 on my local machine, which is my Windows machine, that you see above, anything that I pipe over or ask for port 1880, send it over that tunnel and access the devices and the services on 192.168.1.10 port 1880. So if I bring up a web page here and in the, the URL, I type in localhost colon 1880, so localhost is my local machine here, my Windows machine, and hit enter, it's going to bring up my node red programming interface at that remote site. And I can also get into the UI by typing in localhost colon 1880 forward slash UI, and it's going to bring up the dashboard at the remote station for Node Red. Now you have to keep your SSH tunnel up because if I destroy this tunnel and log out of it, then my connection is going to be destroyed just like a VPN. So that is basically the quick and dirty way on how you can get into and access services on your remote site through an SSH tunnel using uh, SSH uh, or port forwarding on your router. Hope you found this uh, interesting and uh, hopefully it helped you out to help build out your remote station. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and uh, check out my other Node-RED videos that I have on my channel. Thanks, 73.